Good morning. Good morning class. So on this day, hope you are okay and in good condition. Today, we're going to discuss the chordate origin and phylogeny. So since we are vertebrate belonging to subphylum vertebrata, phylum chordata, kingdom animalia. In vertebral uh, subphylum, why do we belong to subphylum vertebrata? Because we have these four major characteristics. We have the notochord, the pharynx, dorsal, hollow, nervous system, and the vertebral column. Notochord, these are rod of living cells, ventral to central nervous system. Uh, the fate of this, we, it develops further into head region, incorporated into floor of the skull, and trunk and tail, or the develop further into vertebral column. In adults, some animals like fishes and amphibians, notochord persists the length of the trunk and tail, but constricted within the centrum of each vertebra. Reptiles, birds, and mammals, notochord disappears during the development and they're placed into a, a certain structure. Protochordates, notochord remain as the chief axial skeletal system. In agnathans, lateral neural cartilages are located on notochord lateral to the spinal cord. Next character. We have the pharynx. This is the region of alimentary canal exhibit, exhibiting pharyngeal pouches in embryo, where pouches may open to the exterior as slits. So we have permanent slits that adults live in water, breathe via gills, mostly fishes, sharks. Temporary slits, adults live on land. One good example, you have the amphibians or specifically the frogs. The frogs have undergo metamorphosis. They have the larval stage uh, in a fish form. Then later on, it develops to an adult. Uh, the gills were transformed into lungs, simplified lungs. While the dorsal's hollow central nervous system consists of the brain, spinal cord, and contains central cavity called the neurocell. So let's proceed the vertebrate beginnings. In the beginning or in the past, uh, the most oldest type of specimen that we have is we have the ostracoderms. Uh, ostracoderms uh, usually uh, uh, dated during Cambrian explosion through Devonian, so more, more or less 400 to 500. 25 million years ago. So, ostracoderms basically characterized having armored plates or they have the bony plates and scales. Probably these fishes are very heavy. One reason that they become extinct due time because since they are very heavy, they have the hard time to swim against a disastrous event. So before ostracoderms, we have the Mylokunimingia feng diao. So a picture below, you have that kind of fish. And Hycochis erachinensis, a primitive fish that have many similarities to living hagfishes. And these are one of the oldest vertebrates, uh, 530 million years um, based on its rejudating. So we have before vertebrates, we have this Chinese eel of good fortune, Catimirus diadexus. It is not a fossil um, Russian eel with a 5 centimeters long that lives more or less 535 million years old. And uh, this kind of fish could be linked to the living Amphioxus in the present day. So, ito yung picture ng Katimirus. Katimirus. What about Phylum Chordata? So, Phylum Chordata was established in 1874 and 
they have a major uh, described by four major characteristics number one must have an autocord number two presence of pharyngeal pouches or slits number three having a dorsal hollow nervous system and number four cells that produce the hormone tyroxine so an animal that belongs to phylum chordata must have these four characteristics so we have the subphylum you have the urochordata urochordata or we called it tunicates uh, this is a chordate ancestor of vertebrates they are sessile, meaning they cannot transfer from one place to the other. So they don't have the ability to move. The tail is evolved as adaptation in larvae to increase mobility. But during the larval stage, they, can, they are free living. But upon they develop to adult stage, they become more sessile. So to decade larva is al also called the sea squirt. So the notochord is confined to the tail. Um, let's have the picture. Notochord is lost during the metamorphosis. Then they have possessed pharyngeal slit, which is visible in the adult stage. So this is the larval stage of the tunicate. So passion tadpole. It it looks like a tadpole, but later on, when it develops into an adult form. It looks like a sponge but they have a complex uh, structure uh, when compared to a sponge because we have here the pharyngeal basket the endostyle represented by green they have already the heart they have the stomach the gonads the atrial siphon and buccal siphon which could be um, link uh, resemblance to of sponge because sponge have also this kind of opening next group we have the cephalochordata in which the amphioxus or we call the brachiostoma uh, belong so what are the vertebral features of this cephalochordata they have to steal the notochord dorsal hollow nervous system pharyngeal slits and circulatory system so vertebral vertebrate pattern with pumping vessels but they don't have a concrete heart structure um parang meron lang siyang pulsating organ in this animal so this is the exact anatomy of the amphioxus so ha, they have already the oral hood or the serai in which the main entry where they going to pick up food then we have they have their this type of line what they call this line so these are the pharyngeal band so this is called the slits we have there in the dorsal part the square organ called the dorsal fin ray box and all these parts have its own function so we have there the notochord the myotomes notochord gives support in the body of the maintain the shape of the animal myotomes responsible for the motor functions cri the sensory device of the animal gill slits function as the filter feeding device Oral hood serve as the entrance or the storage or food. Atripore serve as exit passage of water. Metapular folds help to stabilize uh, lancelets while swimming. Caudal fin used for propulsion and steering during swimming. And we have also the caudal fin uh, used also for swimming dorsal fin anus was used to have already the anus to excrete their waste the wheel organ draws food through the use of its cilia for digestion ocelli it will serve as their sensory organ or sight to detect light Ventra velar tentacles prevent undesirable objects from entering or the in the digestive cavity so parang filtration device ng amphioxus 
They have also the vellum, work as the valve or filter together with the velar tentacles. And second, functions for secretion and absorption. Parang um, uh, small intestine ng organism. Because the small intestine in our part, ang main function is absorption ng uh, digested food. Next, we have the hemichordates or we call the acorn worms. So, Bateson added acorn worms in the phylum chordata group during 1884 because they have these characters. They have the dorsal, hollow nervous system, the gill slits, and the short diverticulum, the gut, or called the stomachord. So, present consensus, the stomachord is not homologous with the notochord, and hemichordates are placed in a separate phylum. So, that's why they have a se uh, belong to separate phyla. So, possible invertebrate ancestors, we have the annelids. Um, I know what is the evidence that um, all chordate group derive from annelids because of the evidences. We have the bilateral symmetry or segmented body, the central nervous system with brain and longitudinal longitudinal nerve cord so evidence against annelids we have the nerve cord is not solid and the nerve cord is not located ventrally so lahi ang location ng na sa annelid and it is not um, like what we have sa mga vertebrates so that makes them against that annelid is a um, candidate for link resemblance to uh, phylum chordata uh, vertebrata. Another candidate that uh, we are linked to a certain invertebrate, we have the echinodermata. Chordate characteristics include radial cleavage during embryonic development. So the blastomeres in adjacent tears lie directly about one another. So but this opposed to spiral cleavage in higher forms of animal. Anos form near the blastophore, so that is gisterotomus. Mesoderm arise as an outpocketing of the gut wall, which is similar to a, a higher form of animal development, and in indeterminate cleavage. So the fate of the blastomere isn't predetermined. So when we say indeterminate cleavage, so, in summary, so we have the phylum chordata, sub-phylum vertebrata. Uh, we have developed superclass, but in other uh, books, they mention only class, five classes. We have the class of the fishes or the osteoctites, um, uh, amph class amphibia, class reptilia, class aves, and class mammalia. But in other references, uh, they divided into superclass, then class, then classes. So, in superclass, we have two superclasses, the Pisces and superclass Tritapoda. The superclass Pisces belongs to the fishes or yung mga vertebrates uh, that swims and no legs. While superclass Tetrapoda, when you say Tetra, four-legged animal. Poda refers to the legs. So we have the amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammalia. So four appendages. Kung hindi man legs because uh, aves have only two legs but the appendage, it has four appendages. Uh, the first two was used for flight or balance while the rest of the appendages serve as their poda or the feet. So, agnetans versus tastosomes. When we say agnetans, a uh, refers to no, na, mouth, uh, lower jaw. So, these are the fishes with no, lower jaw. Natosomes, these are the fishes with uh, lower jaw. So, they have semicircular canal. Agnetans have one or two. Nastosomes have three. So, they have jointed. 
So, they have jointed paired lateral appendages. The agnatans have none. In terms of jointed paired lateral appendages, the agnatans don't have these appendages, while nastosomes have these jointed appendages. They have the jaw. Agnatans don't have, but nastosomes meron. In class agnata, we have there the following order. We have the osteotraci, anapsida, teleodonti, geliaspida, pituariaspida, teleomizontia, and mixinodia. So in this chap, uh, in this lecture, we go to petromizontia, the lampreys, and the mixinodia. So ito yung medyo may representative present. So we have already mentioned the ostracoderm beforehand. So, ostracoderms under his, we have the ostritraci, anapsida, heterotrax, trachy, and coleolepid. So, these are already extinct. So, these are example of the primitive ostracoderms sa left, uh, right corner of the slide. So, these are the old known vertebrates. So, hindi masyado natin fully i-discuss in the these groups. Many have flattened appearance and heavily armored fishes. Next, we have the cyclostomes. Under this, we have the petromyzontia and myxinodea. So, lampreys and hagfishes. So, lampreys are parasitic fishes with horny grasping teeth. Hagfishes are primarily scavengers, yung mga substrate fishes. So, mostly they are found sa mga deep sea oceans. So, next we have the gnastosomes. So, we have the fishes with lower jaw. So, ito yung mga isda with lower jaw. And you already uh, encountered some of these fishes. We first, we have the Ancatodians. So, these are the known earliest nastosomes during the Silurian period way back 440 million years ago. So, probably related to the bony fishes or the ostictes. So, more or less, they are 20 centimeters long. So, they are very small with large eyes. Ancatodians mostly likely died out because of rapidly increasing number of ray fin fishes and sharks during the Permian period. So, probably they extinct due to predation. Next, we have the Placodermy. So, Placodermy uh, appeared during the Silurian, so more or less. 420 million years before present and probably the main line of the vertebrae evolution and these fish have also dermal shields bony dermal shields they have a sharp tooth plates so this is how it look like now after the fishes we have to discuss the vertebral eggs. Okay. Vertebral eggs have different variety based on the amount of yolk and its position and this distribution within the egg. So, types of egg based on the amount of yolk. We have the alicetal. So, the alicetal have little amount of yolk so based on this um, yellow so diagram on the uh, right corner you have there the alicetal eggs um, the yolk is small amounts scattered within the egg so one good example is the mammal which is alicetal we have also the mesolicetal so the, nu the cytoplasm is very or the uh, nucleus is represented by pink and the cytoplasm is blue so the yolk the shaded portion yellow is called the yolk so the mesolicetal one example is senopus 
or freshwater lampreys, gannoid fishes, lungfishes, and amphibians. So they have a moderate amount of yolk. The next one, we have the megalecetal, or the massive amount of yolk. So one good example, mammonotrims, marine lampreys, the lost reptiles, and birds. Now how about types of egg based on distribution of yolk? So we have the isolecetal egg in which there are even distribution of the yolk present in alicetal eggs. So the yolk is widely distributed within the egg and one good example are the sea urchin. We have also the teleolicetal eggs. The cytoplasm in yolk tends to concentrate or accumulate on the opposite pole. So we have the opposite pole where the cytoplasm, then the yolk is on the other side. So one good example ng teleolicetal egg ay yung megalicetal egg on birds. Now let's have uh, different uh, ways where they develop are where the young of a certain organism will be developed so first we have the vv parity so this is the embryo develops inside the body of the mother and the living young is delivered in a certain period of time so the young during embryonic develop was reared inside the mother so, the eggs of the viviparous animal had a hard outer covering or shell-like chicken egg, some of it. But in viviparous young grow in adult female until they are able to survive on their own outside body. So, there are animals that in which the eggs are also uh, inserted in the mother. So, there are certain types of fishes that undergo viviparity. So, example of viviparous animal, we have the placentals, humans, horses, mga mammals mostly. So, we have uh, oviparity, ovi, oviparity. So, those first slide, it deals on the viviparity. Now, let's have the oviparity so these are egg laying animals so egg laying animals obtain all nourishment as they develop from the yolk and the protein rich albumin or white so one good example of oviparous animal mostly human egg laying animals like the crocodile the birds some fishes and even mammals like the platypus so platypus also lay eggs these are the first mammal that lay egg mga monotremes so ovo viviparity so ovo viviparity these are animals developed within eggs that remain within the mother's uh, body up until they hatch or about to hatch so ito na yung mga animals that they lay their eggs so, correction, so viviparity, um, the embryo was developed inside the mother. And yung ovoviviparity, the eggs develop inside the mother and it hatches also. Um, when it hatches, maghatches sa inside din sa mother, then yun. So, animals develop within the eggs and remain within the mothers until they hatch or about to hatch. So, employed by many aquatic life forms such as fish, and some sharks, reptiles, and invertebrates. So, the young of ovoviviparous amphibians are sometimes born as larvae and undergo metamorphosis outside the body of the mother. So, one good example of a frog, we have the Crogastor vivipara and another type of reptile called the giant water coral. Even the anaconda. So, if you're going to watch example of reptiles that 
uh, they keep their eggs inside the mother and it hatches already inside and they release already as la living young so parang live birth ang labas so one good example of snakes is anaconda okay next we have the development so the development of this animal starts with in the fertilization where the gametes are essential in fertilizing the egg so what are the gametes for the male we have the sperm and for female dapat we have the egg so when the sperm and egg meets it will form a zygote so the zygote so when the zygote undergoes several transformations, cell division, it develops into a ball of mass. And as it goes to uh, several mitotic division, it develops into a blastula. So during cleavage, the individual cells are called blastomere. So, the blastula is a hollow ball of cells in the cavity. So, blast, uh, so we have there the blastocele. So, this is the blastoderm. And we have the blastocele. This is a space. So, sea or cheat, mas malaki ang blastocele compared to a frog. And the vegetal portion, the large mass, and we have there the blastoderm. So this is the blasto, uh, blastomere of the frog. So after during fertilization, so ito yun ang yare. So um. Uh, the zygote will continually divide during mitosis so you have the two cell then later on four cell then two else eight cell then late and so forth so this is how it develops a mammal sa bird and we have here the amphibians so the microlicetal egg like in amphioxus have total or holoblastic cleavage so the cleavage follows the entire yolk so it forms a cleavage so it divides equally so the result the blastula is hollow ball the cell cavity cell cavity called the blastocele so while sa amphibians in a mesolicetal egg like in frog have a total but unequal cleavage so this is the unequal cleavage and the development is very slow so the blastocele is displaced in the animal hemisphere So this is the cleavage of the frog egg. So in H, we have here the blastocele. So this is the vegetal hemisphere ultimately contains longer and fewer blastomeres than the animal half. How about sa mammal? In a macrolicetal egg, have an equal and partial meroblastic cleavage. So, limited to a relative small yolk-free region to the animal pole, at the animal pole. So, the yolk mass is great to be penetrated by the cleavage furrow. So, a cellular blastoderm is separated by uncleaved yolk by a narrow cavity. So, this is how it divides during uh, the cleavage stage so another one we have the fish blastula so you have there the animal pole and vegetative pole next stage uh, after cleavage you have the grastula okay. when a blastula develops into an embryo 
At first, the grastula has two germ layers. You have the ectoderm and the endoderm. So the um, before uh, early grastulation, you have two germ layers will be developed. Ang ectoderm and endoderm. Then later on, sa late, uh, late uh, gastrulation, you have already there the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So, in the diagram, the grastulation of dipoblast, the formation of the germ layers from one blastula, here, to two grastula. Muna ni ang two grastula. Some of the ectoderm cells in orange move inward forming the endoderm uh, representing the red color or red shade. Next step after gastrulation, ga grastulation, we have the neurulation or the development of the neural crest. Neurulation is a process to convert gras gastrula into neurula. So, it is a part of organogenesis or vertebrae embryo. So, step of neurulation include the formation of dorsal nerve cord and formation later on to central nervous system. So, the process begins when the notochord induces the formation of the central nervous system by signaling the ectoderm germ layer to above to form the thick and flat neuroplate. So, it also requires the help of the ectoderm. So, this is the process of neurulation. First, the notochord forms from the mesoderm cell soon after gastrulation is complete. So, the notochord in small red cylindrical portion and we have the orange one, we have the mesoderm. Then the blue shade is the ectoderm where the neural plate is developed. Next, signals from the notochord causes inward folding of the ectoderm and the neural plate. So, the notochord will move and the neural plate will be folded. Then later on, ends of the neural plate, itong greener portion, the ends of the neural plate, fuse and disconnect from autonomous neural tube. So, this will connect with each other, fuse together, and mas separate na siya sa ectoderm. So, it will form a neural tube. Then, the mesoderm will form into a somite. Then, the green portion found at the end of the neural plate will develop into a neural tube. So, this is another formation of the neural plate folds it upon itself from neural tube which will later differentiate into spinal cord and the brain. One, two, three, four, and five. So, let's proceed. So, new relation in vertebrates result in the formation of neural tube which gives rise to both the spinal cord and the brain. So, neural crest cells are also created during neurulation. So, neural crest cells migrate away to the neural tube and give rise to a variety of cell types, including pigment, pigment cells and neurons. So, this is another diagram showing the neurulation. So, we have here another diagram. From UCLA. This is another diagram of neurulation. Okay, at the start of neurulation, three germ layers are well defined already. So, as the neural plate which forms from ectoderm, so the neural plate derived from ectoderm. 
So it was located above the notochord. So this is the dorsal surface view. And we have the cross section. And this is the longitudinal section. So in the middle of the neurulation, the edges of the neural plate move upward and grow toward one another. The center of the plate sinks. So the plate sinks. Kung makita natin sa previous yung, um, yung green portion. Forming the neural groove. So magko-connect sila later on. Forming the neural groove. Then later in your relation, wait. When the edge of the neural plate grow together and fuse a hollow cylindrical form and detaches from the ectoderm to become the neural tube. So yung green, kung makita natin yung green um, from the other diagram here, itong green portion magde-detach siya and it will form into a neural tube. So, that's it. Now, after the next step, next step of neurulation, proceed to organogenesis. Now, organogenesis is the period of animal development during which the embryo become a fully functional organism capable of independent for survival. So, we have already different organ systems. And the process which specific organs and structures are formed and the cell movement, cell differentiation, directing to a specific type of cell and it also has its own specific function so organogenesis requires interaction between different tissues these are often reciprocal interactions between the epithelial sheets and mesenchymal cells okay so during fertilization we have the production, uh, development of the zygote, then the zygote will form into a blastocyst, then uh, gastrulation, after gastrulation, the development of the three germ layers. We have the ectoderm, mesoderm, and the endoderm. Now, the ectoderm will develop further to a specific organ or develop further to other organs like epidermis sa tao and other animals uh, epi epidermal placodes sa mga uh, lens of the inner ear neural tubes like we had we had the brain and smart uh, neural tubes then later on develop into brain and spinal cord and the neural part we have the peripheral nervous system or yung mga neurons or mga nerve endings. Well, sa mesoderm naman, mesoderm portion, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 major groups divided to 4 to different subgroups also. Like what we have sa axial. Axial, paraaxial, intermediate, lateral, and head. So, sa axial, it developed to noctocord. Then, sa paraaxial, we have the sclerotome, myotome, and dermatome. Then, sa intermediate mesoderm, we have the mm, Mullerian ducts, mesonephros, uh, later on sa mga reproductive organs and kidneys. And, we have also the lateral mesoderm. Uh, we have two subdivisions, yeah, the somatic and the visceral. And later on, the head or the head part of the mesoderm. So, the sclerotome later on divide to axial or skeletal system. Then, the myotome, the skeletal muscles that responsible for the movement of the organism. The dermatome uh, will develop further into connective tissues. Then, the intermediate 
we have the, the Mullerian ducts and the mesonephron. Sa lateral, we have the somatic and visceral. So, sa somatic, it also de will develop also to connective tissue and body walls and limbs. While the visceral uh, mesoderm, we have the mesenteries, the heart, the blood vessels, the intestines. While the endoderm, endoderm from the yolk sac develop further to a primitive gut you have the lungs there the liver the pancreas and digestive tubes uh, everything that is have a gut or space within na hindi pala uh, derive ang intestine sa visceral mesoderm but uh, intestines derive from digestive tubes from the end endoderm in origin so we have here another diagram so zygote blastocyst gastrula so the gastrula will develop into three germ layers so we have the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so uh, gastrula sperm and egg also derive from germ cells so, mesoderm, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, tube cell of the kidney, red blood cells, and smooth muscle in the gut. The endoderm, we have the lung cell, thyroid, and pancreatic cells. We have the ectoderm, the skin cells, the neurons of the brain, and the pigment cells. Another diagram. So, before we st uh, before we end this, so the organis organogenesis from ectoderm. So from somatic ectoderm, we have the epidermis, the, the organs develop into epidermis of the skin, enamel, enamel is found in our teeth, somodium, mouth, proctodium cloaca or anus gill epithelium so mga fishes amnion and chorion in part uh, found in siya sa ating the, uh, sa may placenta during uh, development of the fetus next we have the neural plate ectoderm will develop further into brain and spinal cord while epidermal placodes we have the olfactory capsule, optic capsule, otic capsule, epibranchial capsule, uh, electroreceptors or the neuromast organ, ganglia or some cranial nerves. So, dyan derive sa epidermal placodes. While ang neural crest naman will develop further into spinal ganglia, sparanocranium, neurocranium, dermatocranium, then teen, cornea, chromatophores, branchiometric muscles, areotic arches, heart septa. While the intermediate mesoderm or the mesomere, kidney and neurogenital ducts, the somatic hypomere, it develops further into ribs, para parietal peritoneum, sternum, genital ridge, appendicular skeleton, appendicular muscles, amnion, and chorion. Sa so, organogenesis ng endoderm, since endoderm had three uh, subdivisions, you have the foregut, midgut, and hindgut, uh, which was not uh, stated in other diagrams. So, foregut developed further into oral cavity, nasal cavity, pharyngeal, epi pharynx epithelium, gill epithelium, and lung epithelium. Ito yung mga areas kasi an endoderm is likely found uh, inner part. Midgut, we have the stomach, bladder, intestine, germ cells of the gonads, yolk sac membranes, liver, and pancreas, and allantoy. Hindgut, urinary bladder, and cloaca or anus. So, imagine these are mga organs with spaces within. So, that's the end 
of our chapter so that from we have discussed the different types of eggs then how the eggs are developed from different uh, stages from zygote uh, upon the fertilization of the gametes where the sperm and egg meets and develop into a zygote then the zygote undergoes a mitotic division that develop into a blastocyst then goes to gastrulation then the, in the gastrula stage it develops three germ layers first ectoderm and endoderm lung then later on mesoderm uh, ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm was developed then each germ layer forms a specific uh, organs as a gastrulation uh, next is neurulation so when the notochord includes uh, uh, the development of the head and the spinal cord encloses later on by a neural plate and further develop into a vertebra and the skull but this is developed with the help of the germ layers so together with that we have the development of the organogenesis where a specific the the cells are directed to develop to a specific organ so each 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 germ layer uh like they develop into a specific organ then we have there the new organism so thank you so this is the end of the chapter bye, -bye.